Hello and welcome to another episode of What If It's Cool, the show where we talk about anything and everything that is cool in a world today. I am the voice, try and understand it, Daniel Paul Crow. On this episode, I have a sit-down interview with singer, songwriter, Natalie Gauchi. We talk about how she got into the music industry, being on Australian Idol and winning, as well as being on The Voice, and answering the time world question, are these reality shows rigged? So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm ready for the spotlight with Natalie Gauchi. Natalie, thank you so much for being part of the show. I know you are very busy. Um, you got your new single that you're working on as well. Um, how are you doing? I'm actually doing really well, thank you. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Now, take me take me through your career because uh, I've just uh, just doing a little bit of research, and I I know I knew your name, but I didn't know much about you. And I was like, and then this is why the nerves are really coming out because I'm like, oh my god, she won Australian Idol. Ugh. Um. Oh God! Now it's, it's getting the best of me today. Um. But how did you, how did you uh start start in your career in, in singing? Oh, sorry, well, as a musician. It was uh, before Australian Idol. Mm. Um. I was very young, like three or four, really young. Mm. Uh, mum, mum knew from a very young age that music was my thing, and I wanted. Uh, she also put me into acting, so it was it was like. Dancing, acting, piano were my three things. Mm -hmm. And I did that up until about 12, 13. Then I got a a film and TV diploma. And then I did musicals in high school. And then I did music as a career from about 17 years old to about 25. Wow. And then I got, so I've always like been very entrepreneurial in my way of thinking. So I just like ran my own business and got gigs with my partner at the time who played guitar and he produced music, so we did a demo, and and then we just got some really cool agents who supported us and travelled around Australia. I became like a session singer, and I was doing like, you know, some pretty big gigs. And I was singing with Kate Sobrano, Danny Minogue, like some pretty big names before I went on Australian Idol, and they were the ones who told me, you need to go on this show, like, you know, get out there. You know, mm. they were really encouraging me to um, spread my wings, you know? Yeah. And I got over singing cover songs, so I decided to, uh, because I was always writing music. I was a closet case songwriter and poetry writer. So Mm. constantly writing in books, constantly writing songs, constantly two o'clock in the morning when everything else is, you know, everyone else is asleep, I'm just like, you know, doing my own stuff. Yep, been there, done that. I I know well aware of that. Right, and never really had the courage to do my own music. And then when I went on Australian Idol, um, I put a band together before I went on Idol and thought maybe I'll start getting my band together and then I'll go on Idol just in case I get exposure on the show and then I can start touring with my band. I never expected that I was going to be there to win Um, until like the very last bit of it. Yeah, at top six, I was like, oh, maybe I'm actually going to win this. Like, that's what I actually thought about it, you know. But um, in the initial audition period, I was just there to get exposure for me and my band to do festivals and stuff like that. That was just my goal. Um, And then, yeah, my whole life completely changed. So, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I've been, I was looking at some of the uh, the footage on YouTube and the one song, and I, I can't believe it hasn't sort of come back out because it was such a big hit over the last, uh, what I said, last 18 months, um, Running Up the Hill. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be flat out honest here, and this is not me kissing your ass or anything, I think you do a much better version um, than Kate Bush. Oh, really? I love oh. it. I, I've been listening sort of nonstop for the, the whole morning, so that's actually been uh, what I've been using to pump myself up to get to get in this interview. Cool, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. That's all I right. That's one of my favourites, to be honest. Would you ever re-release it though? If it, it... Uh, well, actually, Sony own it, so um, um, I would have to re-record it. No, nah, okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, so I think that's just a moment in time. You yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so you you win Australian Idol and you uh you, you signed with Sony, but you ended up leaving Sony. Uh, and I was reading on Wikipedia saying that um you you were just felt full pressure. Talk me through what was going on there. Well, like just to give you a bit of perspective, I'm now 41, and I won the show when I was 25. It was mm-hmm. on my 26th birthday, and I had not ever been famous before. I didn't really know what that was going to entail into my life and it was all a sudden fame because when I was on the show, 
I only had, not only had, but there were about two or three or 4,000 people there mm. in the audience. And then I did High Point Shopping Center and there were hundreds of thousands of people like lighting up out the shop. Like mm. it was insane. And that was my first uh, introduction to the public after being in a little bubble, like on a TV show, you know? Hmm. So here I am singing to 3 million people, not really realizing that I'm singing to 3 million people. Like, I really didn't understand what, you know, was going on. So when I got to that high point performance and I got and I saw the people, I, I actually got the shakes to the point where I didn't know if I could go out there and do the do my performance because hmm. I was so overwhelmed with the love and support and the and the screams, like, it was just like, wow. And I did end up shaking off the nerves and I did end up um, doing really well for a little bit. But because uh, I was living in Sydney, I didn't have my family and stuff, um, I was very alone and I was very isolated um, for a good year of mm. my life, um, traveling with people I didn't really know and, um, I just wanted, I needed a break, like I was getting overworked. And um, during that time, I had a pretty bad panic attack um, because I felt out of control. I felt out of control of my life. I didn't know what my next move was. I was getting told I had to be here at this time, I had to be there at that time. I was constantly just like being told like a robot, uh, you know, I got to be here and then I got to be there. So I didn't really get the time to um, celebrate in a way um and rest yeah and i had a i had a, a negative uh um voice in my head taking over and telling me i wasn't good enough telling me i um i didn't deserve this and i was sabotaging bit by bit everything that i was all these opportunities that were coming and so i ended up leaving australia because i felt like I failed all my fans and really did a lot of damage to what could have been an awesome ride, an awesome journey. And um, my second, my first album went platinum, it went gold. Um, I did a tour on the back of that um, all around Australia. I was the only Australian Idol to do a tour of my own with Matt mm. Corby. He, Matt Corby supported me. And um, so, yeah, so I traveled, I went overseas, I, I went through a very, very, very serious depression. <laughs> And I realized um, that it was because of a past trauma that happened to me as a child of abuse mm. um, that I had it dealt with. And the fame actually brought it to, to the surface. So I've spent the last seven years of my life uh, coming to terms with that. Yeah. And now I feel like I, ha I am now okay with it. And I have the tools to deal with it. Mm. And I understand now what, who I am, you know, as a woman, as a mother, as an artist. Um, and I've written some amazing music out of this that I'm about to release um, to people. And I just get, I guess this is just part of my journey and, and that's what happened. And I, I actually made the decision to leave the label and, and, um, and I didn't accept what they were giving me uh, as truth. I felt mm. very intimidated and I felt very... Um, but it wasn't because of them. It was because of uh, I was reenacting my um, abuse situation with them. So it was like my map, my mind mapping was seeing the past. It wasn't seeing what was actually in front of me. Mm. So with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of post-traumatic stress had a lot to do with my career with Sony. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you decided not to not to resign and 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 take care of yourself because the flip side of that coin is, you know, it, what, what you're telling me here, you could, you know, we we could be, you know, we, we may not be even talking right now, um, you know, like the pressure of fame and pressure of uh, going on tour. Um, for for those that don't that don't know, I I, I am a former musician, uh, and I have toured, and I I know just. How stressful it can be, but I've not had the pressure of being being signed to a label. Um, kind of glad actually in in the long run. <laughs> um, but you know, hearing this, I'm just like, if you're putting yourself first, I think that's that all that matters. Like the fan, the fans will understand, you know. Yeah. And if they don't, then they just 
they're, they're not real fans. So, you know, we're all human beings, and um, I'm really glad that you that you took the the time to to look after yourself and 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 now on the on the mend, as they say. Yeah, exactly. And I feel ready now. I feel ready to do the things I didn't do before. I believe in myself. I believe in my voice. I believe in my music. I believe in God. I believe in, you know, I've got a strong faith. And, um, yeah, I, I feel ready for sure. Yeah. Um, talk me through because you you I I don't I don't know if you're uh, if if you're the first or or you're or the only one, but you also did uh, did a stint in the voice as well. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So the voice contacted me a few times. Yeah. And I declined and because they wanted me to be a participant in the show, not like a judge or anything. Mm. Um, so it wasn't until I got pregnant with my son and they contacted me for the third time that I decided that maybe I should do something because I hadn't been in the public eye for quite a while. And I'm really glad I did it because mm. um, it really brought me back into, you know, into people's, uh, uh, what do you call it, into people's vision. Yeah. 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 What were some of the differences between Idol and, and The Voice? Because obviously a different concept because obviously there's judges and, and um, you know, they have to be blind and all that stuff. Um, but in essence, it is a completely different show. What, what, what were some of the behind the scenes and some of the things that you had to deal with that are different to, as opposed to Idol? Uh, Idol was like back in the early days was so much more about the music. Mm. Uh, the Voice is more about the judges. Okay. It's not really about the singers. Like everybody remembers the judges on The Voice, but they don't remember the singers. The only thing I remember from The Voice is uh, Boy George's hats. That's the only thing I could. That's the only, only thing go. I could think of. Um, there you go. And they yeah. paid like millions of dollars. And so you know, it becomes about the these are the judges. And I did feel that uh, at the time, like I was just kind of getting paid to play a role, and they already had me kind of. Um, mapped out to what I was going to be, whether I was good or not, that was just where I was going to be. Mm. And um, on Idol, it wasn't like that. Every week you were judged, like you were honestly judged and the counts of the voting were real. Mm. They were real. And because for ages I thought that were it was rigged. But actually I found out from a, a, a source that was very, you know, close to me, Said, you know, um, he said that I got the most votes out of any Australian Idol winner um, on Jazz Night. Yeah, yeah, and I, I didn't believe it. I just didn't. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> no. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm still. I, I, I'm not going to put my political views on you, but I'll just I'll make it very quick. Very yeah. quick. Um, when it comes to these shows, I'm not, as a musician, I'm not, I'm not really for it. Uh, because I think you know you, you, your talent should be just go out there. Uh, but that's just me. But the one thing I do love about it is the exposure for so many people to get out there and 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 um, just you know just enjoy music. And the the only thing that I've always had a problem with, and now, and now that you've debunked it, makes me feel a lot better. Is I always thought that the 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 votes are rigged. There you go. And I don't know if they're rigged on The Voice or not. I can only know from what I experienced on the show with Australian Idol mm. um, that it just felt so amazing. Like, I loved being on that show. I loved the crew there. I loved the challenges. I even loved the hard times. Like, I was a bit of a wild one um, when it came to, like, you know, thinking outside the box all, all the time. Mm. And with The Voice, like, I never had that freedom. And because I was still breastfeeding Jedi, he was only like, my son was only three months old. Um, I was very vulnerable and I wasn't like in my power as such. Like I didn't actually stick up for myself and say, hang on, I want to do an original song or I'm not doing the show. Like I didn't, I was just like, you choose the song, you do whatever you want. You know, I didn't really like uh, take control of the situation. I let them. And I think that was my mistake mm. because I didn't realize that it wasn't the same as Idol. And I, and I trusted them, you know, and and they're not trust, trustworthy people. I, I, I will honestly say that. Yeah. They just, yeah the show producers or the, or the judges themselves? Uh, I don't think it's the judges. I think it's the producers. Yeah. Yeah. I think the judges just do what, you know, they're told to do and they're just like, you know, um, a role as well mm. in the script. But um, when it come, came to the producers, I felt like, 
they weren't really telling me the truth. They were like, this is where we want, what, what we want you to do. And they told me that I couldn't do an original song, but then there were two other participants doing original music. And that really upset me because I was like, that's not fair. Like they're telling me one thing and then they're telling the younger ones another thing. I didn't find it very respectful. Um, and I probably wouldn't encourage any of my students to go on The Voice. But mm. I would I would say go on Idol. I, that would, I think Australian Idol's better. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's just a, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I don't watch the voice. I just, I just watch the clips that my, my niece uh, loves to, to, loves to, to show me, and I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Um, but just seeing this, I, I, I would never want to go on, on, um, on the voice. It just, it just yeah. sounds, ugh, because it, because I think as a musician, you, you need to have some, some sort of freedom. Um, if you're going to be doing shows like this, and it sounds like Idol, yeah. you had a bit more freedom. Um, cause like if it was, if it was me, you know, if they said I couldn't, couldn't do what songs I wanted or I can, I couldn't do my own, um, my own original stuff. I'm like, fuck it. I'm, uh, yeah. See you guys. I don't need the show. I'm, um, I'm, I'm very, um, I have to have somewhat control of, of my career. Mm. And, and especially when I, when it comes to me performing, um, you know, I need to have that, that outlet because I don't want to be a robot. I have been in a similar, similar situation where I've been told what to do. I did it for two years and, hated every single minute of it i you know and everyone goes to me oh but that was such a great time in your life right i went no it was actually one of the worst parts of my life because i was a f part of my french but i was a fucking puppet yeah and you don't want to be like that as a musician no no, no. no i think the best i think success to me is uh about having creative freedom with your art and being mm. respected for being an artist or who you truly are and I felt even though I was doing covers on Australian Idol, I felt very respected as an artist and as a person, mm. you know? And you, and, and you were allowed to play um, piano on, on the show as well, right? Because yeah, I don't I don't think a lot of people were able to do um, play their own instruments, right? Well, I pushed for it. Mm. I really did push for it. Um, I remember saying to the director, where's the piano? When I got to the audition, I'm like, where's the piano? Mm. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, we don't have one. And then when I got to the audition process with the TV cameras and the judges, there was a keyboard there. And I was nice. like, score! <laughs> so it was the little things, you know? <laughs> I think I think that boosts you up because like, I, I, I take more, more notice of idle idol, uh, contestants if they're actually playing an instrument. Uh, you know, I'm just like, okay, they're not just a singer, they're actually are a musician, they actually spend time on their craft. They're not just going, all right, I'm going to go on idle to, to get a contract and then I'm going to make millions of dollars and, you know, retire you know wealthy in, in a beach somewhere you know yeah 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 well it wasn't like that for me at all like not at all my mum my mum like really encouraged me to play piano and it was mainly just because she knew I could sing and she knew the same she thinks the same as you like she wanted me to have an instrument to be taken seriously and know the music not just be a singer Mm. that's uh, that uh, unfortunately that's the filipino in me like we're you know we can't just be a singer we can't just be a dancer can't just be an actor we need to know you know an instrument yeah. need to know yeah. you know this and this and this i'm just like yeah come on i just want to learn one craft no 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 you got to do all this and i tell you what it definitely uh has been the best thing for me in my career and mm. I, you know the european ways is, it sounds very similar so yeah no it's it, it's it, I, I think it's exactly the same to be honest yeah. uh, you know yeah. i I'm 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 half Irish and you know my dad was very was very very similar to to that. The only thing is he didn't push me into learning an instrument. He's just like he just to make sure you you learn how to sing perfectly, not you know that poppy rock crap you listen to. So um, what would perfectly be classical training or something? Um, so I had to do um vo vo vocal training. Uh, I'd started that when I was uh I would have been fifteen. Um, and it, that's because like my, my mum encouraged me to continue doing that. Um, and the one thing that they wanted, they wanted me to do, uh, back in the day, they wanted me to, uh, can, uh, to do dancing. I want to do tap. And unfortunately, um, uh, because, uh, times are really tough and, uh, especially in the nineties, uh, no, tap dancing schools in Melbourne were very, very expensive. Mm. Yeah. But the show's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would have loved to I would have loved to have done um tap dancing. I, I, I would have said, you know, stuff the music career, stuff the acting career. Tap dancing, I I, I always I always thought it was more It's never more too beauty. late. It's never too late to do tap dancing. Go I love I love whatever's cool a lot more than tap dancing. So I'd rather be doing this, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> okay.
Um, so you're you're now releasing uh, your own music uh, independently. Yes. What has been some of the challenges doing that? Oh, where do I start? <laughs> um, I think the biggest challenge for me was breaking out of my own chains, yeah. mental chains, because <coughs> I was searching for something I already had. Right? I know that sounds really, really weird, but it's true. I was searching for something I already had. It was like, you know, when you just travel around the world and then you come home and you're like, oh, I love my home. Mm. But you had to go all the, all the way around the world to realize that home is the best, mm. right? Which is, I think, completely normal maybe. But um, for me, I, I was, I'm a very curious person. I'm a very like driven person. And if I have a dream and if I have a vision, I will accomplish it no matter what. So if the vision is, okay, I'm going to travel to Germany, I will go there. Mm. And I will ask and pray for the finances to go there, to make a way to go there, and I'll just be patient and wait until the time is right, and then I will jump on it. And that's how I've always been. Mm. But the challenge within that was finding happiness within that and the love within that and the joy within that instead of thinking, why would I search for fame when I'm already famous? It doesn't make any sense, you know? It doesn't. Mm. I'm searching for fame, but it wasn't that. It was it was wanting to be heard. Why wasn't I being heard? Mm. I had music out there. Millions of people knew who I was. Um, if you're a puppet, you're never going to be heard because you're doing what other people are telling you what to say, telling you where to be at a certain time. What about my voice? Well, you know, so... The, the songwriting was very crucial uh, to my healing mm. because I had to just keep writing songs on my travels to find what my voice is and where my voice is and what it is that I, you know, want to do. Because I could produce my own music, I could play the piano, I can produce drums, I can make a bass line, I can do all that. Doesn't mean I should do it, <laughs> you know. But then having the money and the finances to be able to find the right producer, mm. to be able to, you know, do all of that stuff. So with songwriting, if I kept releasing songs, then I get royalties from that. Um, and then I can still travel. I can still make music. I can still uh, fund the music, fund my, my life, you know. Mm. Um, so I guess, yeah, the biggest challenge for me was uh, finding the truth within where my music is going to, uh, be like who am I as an artist and who am I as a person what 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 means the most to me in life what what is success really you know this is my journey over that seven to ten year period mm. and and then it wasn't till I had my son that I realized what the true meaning of life actually is and that's when I realized that music was my gift Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized I just needed to be completely free in that, not care what people think. And that's when it all kind of fell together. Yeah. All right. It was coming from a place of love. It wasn't yeah. coming from a place of analyzing, controlling, manifesting. It was just coming from a place of love, which I just didn't have before. Like I had it, but I didn't have it to the point where I have it now. It just sounds like the passion was just was just gone, and now it's been re relit. And uh, you know, for somebody who's um, gone, gone through that, and then it's gone. It's it, you know, and you were gone for a while. Yeah, I'm 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 really I'm really surprised that you got it back because like some people who you, you, I think I could be wrong, but yeah, after maybe you know maybe two or three years, they they just went, no, nah, don't want to do it anymore. I know that happened with me with my with my music career. Yeah, um, you know, but. Kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, thank you. I think for me it's just because I feel like my voice has reached a new level. Mm. It's it's free because uh, I've done a lot of healing on my heart and I feel like now my heart is open and which means my voice is shining like better than ever. And I'm mm. like, well, let's use it. Like let's bring it out there because it's not, it's not a, a struggle for me. It's a joy, you know. Mm. So, oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it, it's it's replaying in my head now. I, 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 this is not a question I was going to ask, but for, for some reason, it just keeps replaying in my head. Um, so I just listened to and watched the the clip for Melting. Oh and, yes, 
my god that i love that song and oh thank you it, and I, i'm not i'm not someone who particularly listens to j- jazzy kind of music like that yeah. um but it is it is so catchy can you just talk me through where did where, where that that's the inspiration for that song and the clip come from well it's a long journey mm. i'll take you back to 2015 or 14 when i wrote the song mm. um I had changed my name to Nellie Bell and I was in a, like in the UK, everybody knew me as Nellie Bell and I was like a vintage kind of jazzy artist and I used to wear like these black wigs and mm-hmm. go out just being this different person. I didn't want to be Natalie Gauchi from Australian Idol. I didn't want people to look at, look me up on Google and, and judge me from Wikipedia. I just wanted people to see me for who I was and not be able to find me anywhere online. Mm. And I did that for five years. I didn't go online. I didn't didn't do anything online. It was all just in person. Didn't have a TV. Like I just wanted to relearn what who I was as a person and as an artist. <clears throat> so I became Nellie Bell, uh, very obsessively, and uh, I was working with this artist called Goldie at the time. And then his label manager asked me out on a date. And we went out on a date and then mm. the dates kept getting later in time, later at night. Then it was like, uh, is this like just a booty call or is this like, uh, no, like I'm not having this. Like mm. this is just not, this not happening. So the night that he called me, it was like, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night. And he's like, I want to come over. I let him come over, but I just felt this stirring inside of me. Like I was awake all night, up all night and, and just thinking, I wanted him out of my space yeah and i didn't want him to come back and uh so i told him in the morning he had to leave and then i wrote melting it just came out i wish that he was that person but he wasn't he Mm. wasn't gonna be affectionate with me he wasn't gonna hold me he wasn't gonna be loving he just wanted one thing and one thing only and i'm like that is not what i want um i want you know and that's what when i wrote the song and when I was writing the song, which took me only about 20 minutes, mm. it just flowed through me, but then I had to learn it. So like I recorded it and then I had to learn the parts, learn how to sing it because it's very high. Mm. And, um, and I had this thing in my head where I could hear the horns and I could hear the beat. I could hear the guitars, like everything as I was writing this music, it was all just like this vision. And then I met this um, uh, record uh, rehearsing stu- rehearsal studio, mm. and they said, "Come and record it here." They helped me set up a funding campaign, where I managed to raise the funds to record all this music. So, I met this producer. We got the horn section from Venezuela. The MD was from Jules Holland's band. Oh um, wow! The drummer was Amy Winehouse's drummer. Like what? It, just, it is, yeah. And it just, it all came together. And the producer, the engineer said to me, Natalie, you need to produce this song. You need to tell tell us what you want. This is your vision. And he just was so encouraging because I was really scared to go, I don't know if this is good enough. I don't know. I don't know. And he trained with me. His mum was an opera singer. So he trained me to show me how to use my voice openly with, um, with that technique to be strong up in the higher register it was a lot of work like it was it was a good three years of work yep yep and then i kept it in the in the bag for a little while and then i got some more funding uh well during COVID, and Mm -hmm. i got to finish it i got to finish the song and release it wow yep so it was a long process yep and then the Mm. music video Mm. sorry i forgot about that yeah uh, so I do vocal coaching as well, mm-hmm. and one of my students uh, is doing film, and she directed that music video with me, and that was her first ever music video she's ever done. Wow, she she's she's, she's bright. She's I bright. know. Yeah. So and that we only did that like four weeks ago or something, five weeks ago. Jeez. Yeah. Yep. Oh, tell, let, let her know. I, I was I was impressed. Um, <laughs> the, 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 and I, I don't mean this in a bad way. The, the, I think and producer Ziggs, where um, when 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 he when he used to be on the show, used to 
pick it, pick on me about this a lot. Uh, whenever I watch anything, I, I I usually like look for the like the littlest things. And for some reason, my brain's going, oh, uh, that's about five dollars from Kmart. That's the this this." I'm like. I gotta just sit there and enjoy the enjoy enjoy the clip, and when I oh, when I have watched cool. it the second time, when I watched it the second time, I'm like, I love this, I love wow. it. Wow, awesome! Yeah, mm. cool. Thank you. It's all right. Just like yeah, let me know that I, I thought it was good, but yeah, I'm, I'm I, don't, I don't know what it is, but that that the, the whole thing like it's just it, the chorus is stuck in my head, and that's why I had to I had to get it out. <laughs> ah, it's catchy. Now your latest single, which is your uh. Tr- Doing, doing a trial with you, or asking your fans to, to listen to it and give you feedback. Correct. How's that going so far? Yeah, good. I mm. only did it for 24 hours. I didn't keep it going because I just only wanted a few uh, to to kind of just see where they felt the song was at. Mm. And the majority, the general feedback was it was an indie country pop soul kind of sound, mm. um, which is different to the other stuff I've done. Um, someone said it's my best work so far and two other people said it sounded and ha- has Natalie Imbruglia vibes. Okay. Of, of 2000s. Okay. And that, that to me, I mean, I think she won Aria Awards for her album. I mean, that's huge. Mm. And she's, she's an international, um, you know, superstar. So that I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> and with this record, I produced, I didn't produce it, but I co- I co-produced it. Like I was in the studio with Andrew Beck in a studio in Gosford and Mm -hmm. he's produced some of the best records in the world. He's from America and he lives in Sydney now. And um, I just felt very, very, very humbled to work with him. And um, he really did bring my songs and my voice to life and just, yeah, I can't, I'm very, very happy and proud of this record. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Good to hear. Why? Why? Why did you decide to ask your fans uh, to do it? Because, like, it's for me, it's a bit daunting to to ask my fans, you know, oh, before I release it, you know, to uh to, to have a check of it. Is it because you, you're you're so comfortable with your fans that you that you want to do it, or you just you just want to be reassured? Well, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, the day before, and she was feeling uh, a bit down. And I said, you know, how are you feeling? And she were talking through stuff. And then at the end of the conversation, I'm like, this might cheer you up. And I sent her two of my songs. Okay. The album. Hmm. And then she wrote back all this feedback to the music. And it really did cheer her up. And I'm like, wow. Okay. So I thought maybe I'll just hop online and see if I can get a bit more feedback just to kind of add to that. And then I can have that as like, the basis of the beginning of something, you know, like, you know, it's just a seed, it's planting a seed of positivity and a seed of excitement. And then it's not only just mine, it's like, I can share it. Yeah. And I, I don't know, it's kind of like a flower blossoming or something. It just um, made me feel really happy. Because <laughs> yeah. when, when you announced, I was like, oh, I don't know many artists that are willing to do that. And I'm like, all right, I, I wanted to do it, but obviously, you know, I've been busy the last few days. Uh, so I wasn't able to do it. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, but um, but I, I, I'm, I'm really, um, really amazed that you wanted to do that, and I'm glad that you're getting great feedback because you know it, it can, it can either be really great or in some cases it can be really bad. But it, I if know. It, yeah, that's, that, really that's and that's scary. Like that's scary for me. I'm, I'm getting a little bit nervous thinking about that. And if I, if I was to do something like that, I think I know deep down that it's, it's awesome. Mm. I, I, I feel like it's just a. I'm really happy with how it represents me. Mm. And if someone doesn't like it, that's fine. I don't care. I don't mind. And I realized through the process that I have really beautiful fans. <laughs> so I felt really, um, yeah, satisfied. Yeah. As long as, as long, as long the, the feedback's positive, you're comfortable. That's what matters. And yeah. can't can't wait to hear can't wait to hear um, your new music because if I, if melting is anything to go by, um, I'm excited. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Natalie, we are come to our staple question here of what if it's cool. What is something that you find cool that nobody else does? I have been trying to think of something ever since we spoke, and mm. it is a, a very, very difficult uh, question to answer because a lot of the things I do, other people do as well. <laughs> All right. But I did come up with one, and... I sing and no one else can sing like me. 
and my voice is unique and that's what I do that nobody else does is sing like me. That's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> that's all um, right. Yeah. <laughs> And that's fine. Like, I, I, I've had so many people uh, who get stumped on this question. They're like, oh, but, you know, everyone, like, it doesn't matter. If you think it's cool, you know, that's what we're talking about. And th th that's the hence why the show is here. You know, we're here to tell stories and find out what's cool. Um, and if you think your voice is cool, that's great. Yes. And mm. um, what else do I think? I think um, the other thing I do kind of secretly, and maybe people do this or they don't, but I'm very big on... Um, on uh real, like praying mm. i'm really big on praying um i have had this new love for god um with this new album mm -hmm. coming out um i feel like if i didn't have that um i probably wouldn't release the record i probably wouldn't be here talking to you right now mm. um and i think that is probably cooler than anything because that um makes it, it it gives me more of a purpose to know that like i'm doing this for god mm. i'm doing this for a higher calling i'm doing mm. this for a purpose and that gets me up in the morning it gets me to do my music um and if i don't have that in my life now i will not do music i will not sing i will not you know and that's the deeper level to the whole like vocal thing you know? mm. 100 respect that um as many people know, I am I am a Christian. I am a believer. I um, didn't know you were a Christian. There you oh, go. This is th th this cross is not for show. Oh, this, is, this, this, this is this this uh, is <laughs> you know I, I you know I don't publicly talk about my faith, but I am yeah. uh, but I have a very strong uh, faith. If uh, if and I've said this multiple times. If God isn't there, then He wouldn't have created me. I've got I've lived through a lot of stuff in my life, yeah. and it, if there is if there isn't a God, you can't explain me. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get that. I get the same. <laughs> yep. Yep. Amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Natalie, where can we find you on all your socials? Uh, you can find me on uh, if you just put at Natalie R Gauchi, it all my socials will come up on that tag at beautiful. Natalie R Gauchi. Yeah. Yep. And, and my and, website's Natalie oh, yeah. Rose Gauchi. Oh, beautiful. Um, can we find you on Spotify as well? Yep. Just under yep. Natalie Gauchi. Beautiful. Yeah. And we'll make sure that all that will be in the description, guys. Nelly mm -hmm. Gachi, thank you so much for being part of the school. I can't wait to hear your new music. Um, I'm sure it's going to be just as awesome as the, the stuff I checked out today. Nelly Gachi, thank you for being part of What If It's Cool. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. That's the end of that episode. Want to be featured on What If It's Cool or know someone with an interesting story that needs to be told? Reach out to me. I can be reached on what if it's called business at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Want more for Wonderful School? Make sure to check out the YouTube channel where you can find the latest episodes of Mukbang Around, Reaction, and of course, the podcast. And don't forget to follow What If It's Cool on all socials. It can be found at What If It's Cool. Keep that support coming. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.